What's up everyone, Alex here. The demo for Ryuga Gotoku 7, Yakuza Like a Dragon in the West, just recently came out in Japan, and I spent a ton of time playing it so I can talk about it in this video. I know that some of you are concerned with the series' shift to a turn-based combat system, and a good portion of the video will be dedicated to that. That said, if you don't know the premise of the story, I highly recommend checking out my video called Yakuza 7, it's a turn-based RPG, which is linked on the top right corner of the screen and in the description of this video. Oh, and I should add that I'll be showing a few select scenes from the beginning of the demo, which seems to occur some time after the story proper starts. Much of the magic of the Yakuza series lies in its surprises, and I want to preserve them as much as I can for when you finally start up and play the game. With that out of the way, let's jump right into the demo. The very first thing I noticed upon starting up the demo was the game's sheer adoration of classic JRPGs, and it shouldn't come as a surprise given how the game's protagonist, Ichiban, loves Dragon Quest. In fact, once you get a new party member, Like a Dragon plays an 8-bit jingle signifying the new party member joining. But it doesn't stop there. Some fantasy tropes manage to invade Like a Dragon's new city, starting off the demo with this fantastic homage to Sword in the Stone. And the 8-bit sprites that show up during the loading screen representing your entire party, along with visual novel-like cutscenes complete with an old-school 8-bit RPG dialog box, really bring the game's heavy RPG leanings to full circle. Truly, Yakuza Like a Dragon wears its old-school JRPG leanings right on its sleeve, and you can totally feel the energy that the developers had a lot of fun making this new game in the series. Love of JRPGs and Dragon Quest aside, Yakuza Like a Dragon is still very much a Yakuza game in the sense that its kooky side quests and adult humor are very much present. I've mentioned before that I can't really read Japanese, but the kinds of shenanigans and hijinks Ichiban runs into in the demo still totally screams Yakuza, almost impossibly crossing over the language barrier. My personal favorite side quest has to be catching a man illegally peeing into the river, only to have to select the correct one in the lineup of four men, looking like they're all peeing into the river. This might turn off people who are new to the series, but I assure you that the jokes and payoffs are so worth it. All these homages and side quests wouldn't be fun without a good battle system to engage in, and Yakuza Like a Dragon's battle system manages to retain the same crazy visceral action that the series is known for, alongside a few new tricks that makes its battles fun and funny. As with previous games, you encounter enemies as they walk around the city. But that's where the similarities stop, as when your party engages the enemy, everyone involved, and I mean everyone, changes to their true forms, and engage in some crazy turn-based combat. Yes, even the enemies themselves transform into homages of RPG monster tropes. I suppose it's not surprising to find many of the game's enemies morph themselves into different enemy types, but it was surprising to learn that Like a Dragon wholeheartedly embraced its inspirations even down to its combat system. Much like many turn-based RPGs of recent memory, Like a Dragon's combat utilizes an input-based system, with a button dedicated to a specific command. However, that's where the similarities to other RPGs end. All of the characters involved in battle will constantly walk around the battlefield, changing their position ever so slightly. This comes to play when you try and attack enemies that are behind others on the field. Let me give you an example. In most turn-based RPGs, hitting an enemy in the back row is trivial, as no enemy will ever stop you from attacking them. In Like a Dragon, your characters need to run up to their target, and if there are any enemies that stand between them and their target, they will be attacked by all of these enemies, effectively losing their turn. This is a huge deal in turn-based RPGs, and this added dimension in combat really shakes things up a bit. Some longtime fans of the genre might complain that this automatic movement could become tedious over time, but after at least four hours of playing, I welcome the challenge that this new system brought forth. You can't always control where your characters move, but they will move towards their targets, which actually works surprisingly well. 
It didn't take long for me to understand what was going on, language barrier withstanding, and immediately understood what was expected of me very quickly. From what I have played, Yakuza Like a Dragon seems to have done away with the series heat system, and opts for a more traditional MP system, which means you'll have to replenish them by buying items from the convenience store or finding restaurants to eat at. These places of business aren't as prevalent as they are in previous games, no doubt because of the change in the battle system, but it heightens the importance of these places. My only complaint thus far is that I'm unable to zoom in on the map in the game, though I haven't really truly checked if this option exists or not. As far as the battle proper goes, you can use a regular attack, which allows your selected character to automatically grab any items to attack with nearby, use skills that use MP, defend yourself, use an item, or even run from battle. The skills are one of the highlights of Like a Dragon's battle system, as many of them really lean into the humor that the game establishes. What's surprising to me is that even though I was unable to understand the skills I was selecting via their text, that the iconography shown managed to represent what the skill was supposed to do, allowing me to just ignore the text altogether and only be mindful of the skill's MP cost and what it does. This is once again a huge deal, as it speaks volumes of the kind of design RGG Studios has put into the game. My favorite skill has to be this gnarly attack by the homeless man. And once combat unfolds, it's fast and a lot of fun. One thing that you can do during battle is to do a Just Guard, which allows you to nullify a portion of your enemy's attack by pressing the X button in time with their attacks. You can also knock down enemies for a prolonged period of time, allowing other characters to attack them with a follow-up hit immediately before their turn. And finally, certain skills prompt you with Yakuza-style quick-time events, either asking you to press the triangle button in time, or mash the square button to power up your attacks. This all makes Like a Dragon's battle system feel more active than typical, normal turn-based battle systems, and I'm certain now that there are many other systems that I probably haven't discovered yet thanks to my lack of Japanese reading comprehension. Oh, and before I forget, I should add that there are summons in the game, like this one. The glue that holds Yakuza Like a Dragon's battle system together is its job system, and I was really excited to learn that the demo even had this. Unlike other RPGs that allow you to change your classes or jobs at any time, Ichiban and his crew have to go to, get this, the employment center to, wait for it, change their careers. Doesn't that make so much sense? When you're there, you're able to select a new job for any of your party members. Maybe you want your homeless buddy to be a street dancer, or change your cop friend into a Yakuza-like fellow. Truly, the choice is yours to make. I won't be going into detail as to what each job does, but the demo gave me a glimpse of the brawler, Yakuza, homeless man, cop, street dancer, male host, female hostess, and female idol jobs. You earn job ranks separately from your character's levels, and some of your party member's skills are even available even when you change jobs. Each job's attacks and skills stays true with that job's actual, um, job, with idols being able to charm enemies, and cops being able to use a megaphone to provoke others into attacking them. But a homeless guy as a magic user? That's news to me. Truthfully, I've always loved turn-based combat, so I can't really answer the question of whether or not fans of the previous, more action-heavy combat would like this. But I do know that RGG Studios has done a tremendous job of creating interesting combat over the past decade or so. And as much as I love the combat and judgment, I was ready to see what RGG Studios could come up with beyond that. And in my opinion, Like a Dragon's combat system manages to not only deliver some crazy new attacks that would have probably required a large array of protagonists, but also, once again, manages to yell out its love for RPGs through and through. I mean, look at these jumping garbage bag men whose incessant hopping reminds me of some bird enemies in other RPGs. But I digress. Overall, I absolutely love my time with a Japanese demo of Yakuza Like a Dragon, and I hope that this demo does get released out here in the West. Not everyone will buy into the idea of the series heading towards a turn-based direction, but no amount of watching gameplay will ever convince you that the battle system is actually, truly, a great change in the series. 
But hey, you can always download the Japanese demo and try it out yourself. Remember that the PS4 is region free, and all you gotta do is to make a Japanese PSN account so you can download the demo and try it yourself. For the people who did this, what are your thoughts of the new combat system? And what do you think of the homages to classic JRPGs and Yakuza Like a Dragon? For the rest of you, what do you think of all this info? And maybe share when you think the game's coming out in the West. Either way, post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching, and have a great gaming week.